Oh, right, so we're going to move on and tackle some question five, which is uh, some electro potentials. So, uh, first of all, part one, uh, draw a label diagram to show how the student can set up cell A. Cell A is based on redox systems one and two. So, let's tackle number one, first of all. If you notice, I can use nickel as the electrics, it's solid. In here, I'm going to have nickel 2 plus aqueous, and that's going to be 1 mole per decimeter cubed. In my other beaker, you'll notice it's actually got Fe3 plus aqueous and Fe2 plus aqueous. Both of those are going to be a 1 mole per decimeter cubed. So I need to use a platinum electrode for that. Then we connect them up with a voltmeter, like so, and of course that is my salt bridge. Uh, right, so the next question um, is quite useful to have this table up. It asks me, uh, cell A, what is going to be the standard cell potential? So it's based on systems 1 and 2, so it's going to be the difference between those two. So 0.77 minus minus 0.25, that gives me a difference of 1.02 volts. Which one's going to be the negative electrode? It's going to be nickel because that's got the most negative standard electro potential. Uh, the other one, cell B, is based on 1 and 3. What's going to be the difference? It's going to be the difference between 0.0 minus 0.74 and minus 0.25, so the difference between those two is 0.49 volts, which one's going to be the negative, where in this case it's actually going to be the chromium is going to be the negative electrode, um, sorry, and so the nickel electrode will actually be positive in that one, so the nickel electrode is positive in that one, and the nickel electrode is negative in that example. Okay, so for this next one, the student left the cell in A connected to a for electrical wire. So actually, a reaction was happening now. Nickel with electrode lost ma mass and gained mass in cell B. So what's going on? Well, for cell A, we have this reaction happening. Oops, if we do. Equations. For cell B, that reaction will be happening. So you can see in cell A, nickel is going into solution as nickel 2 plus, but for cell B, nickel 2 plus is coming out of solution and forming nickel metal. In both cells, the measure cell potential are actually slowly changing. Well, that's because I'm changing the concentration of my ions. As nickel 2 plus becomes nickel, um, obviously the concentration of nickel 2 plus is decreasing. So we can say concentration of ions is changing. And obviously, if you change the concentration of your ions, you're now no, no longer in standard conditions uh, at one mole per decimeter cube. So your electro potentials will change. Okay, so now I need to. Uh, they give me the overall cell reaction. And they've given me one half equation, and they want the other half equation. So uh, this can freak, up, freak people out a little bit. I've got to get to that one. That's, and I've got to add something to this one. So if you think about it, if I've got an electron on that side, I need an electron on that side on the other half equation for it to cancel. If I've got water on that side but none up here, I must have water on that side there. And equally, that hydroxide must be on that side to cancel out. Nickel hydroxide is sorted, but I haven't got any N. So I need N over here. And equally, nickel OOH is there, but I haven't got any NH there. So that is the overall equation. Because if you work back, and you, know, you might as well do it, if you add that one to that one, you'll end up with that. Uh, another method other than absorption that's been developed for hydrogen is adsorption, AD, adsorption, where it gets stored um, uh, on a solid. 
Okay, uh, so question six now. Um, equation that links free energy, uh, delta G equals delta A minus T delta S, you obviously know all that one by now. Let's have a look at uh, something of delta S. Is entropy increasing or decreasing? Well, with this one, three gas becoming two means it is decreasing, so it's negative. This one, a solid becoming a solution, increasing, so it's positive. Liquid becoming a solid, decreasing. Uh, I'm forming a gas here, that's the important one, so it's increasing. Um, and this one, I've got a solid and a liquid becoming one substance, and therefore it is decreasing. Uh, right, now I want me to calculate delta S for this equation here. Delta S for the reaction is the sum of the products minus the sum of the entropy for the reactant. So it's 4 times 211 plus 6 times 189 minus 4 times 192 plus 5 times... Uh, I've got it to be 205 yeah. for oxygen. That comes to... 1978 minus 1793, which gives you 185 joules per Kelvin per mole. Oh, right. This exothermic reaction occurs spontaneously at low temperatures, does not occur at very high temperatures. Explain why. Okay, so I find it quite useful to always use this equation to explain it. It's exothermic, so delta H is going to be negative. But if you have a look, the disorder is decreasing, so delta S is also going to be negative, which means minus T delta S is going to be a positive expression, because it will be negative times a negative. Therefore, delta G must be less than or equal to zero, for it to be spontaneous. So as T increases, minus T delta S becomes more positive, um, and then eventually it will become eventually more positive than delta H is negative and therefore delta G will become positive, delta G becomes more than zero and it's therefore no longer feasible. Uh, okay, so all of iron extracted, they give me delta S and delta H, calculate the minimum temperature. Minimum temperature is when delta G is equal to zero, so if delta G equals zero, delta H equals T delta S, so T is delta H over delta S. Delta H, they told me, is 493. Delta S, remember that's in joules per Kelvin per mole, so you need to convert it to kilojoules per Kelvin per mole by dividing by 1,000, and if you do that, you get 908 Kelvin. Uh, then it's our favourite calculating KC. So, initially I've got four moles of that and nothing of that, and at equilibrium I've got 3.20 moles of that. So that has gone down by 0.8 moles. For every two of those, I only get one of those, so that must have gone up. So I've now got 0.4 moles of that. Concentration, the volume is in two decimeters cubed, so 3.20 divided by 2 is 1.60, 0.4 divided by 2 is 0.2, 0, like so. You then do Kc is going to equal concentration of N2O4 over the concentration of NO2 squared. So it's 0 0.20 over 1.6 squared. And if you do that, you get 0.0781, I believe. Um, have a look at units. Concentration, moles per decimeter cube, moles per decimeter cube, that squared, that cancels with that squared. So it's moles to the minus one 
decimeters cubed. Uh, right, so case is repeated and the pressure in the container is doubled. What is based on the case of the effect of the concentration? So Kc does not change with pressure, first of all. It only changes with temperature. If we have a look at Kc again, Kc we said was that. If I double the pressure, it's going to have a larger effect on the concentration of NO2 because it's squared than it will up the top here. Um, uh, if, you, well, if you think about it, if originally um, it was uh, x over y, that was a, having the concentration of x over, I double it, it then becomes 2x over 2y, but that's squared. So that becomes 2x over 4y. It's had a much larger effect um, down here. So, because it's had a larger effect, the equilibrium will shift to um, the side of N2 over 4. So, concentration of N2 over 4 increases and concentration of NO2 decreases um, to maintain Kc.